think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then it was nothing to me but blinding. The shadows betray you because they belong to me. What's going on everybody, Sloth here, hope you're having an awesome day, and welcome to my Thatcher guide. In this video we're going to talk about how to use this technology racist effectively, his best loadout, and how to use his MKO EMP grenade. Starting with a brief overview of the Master of Disaster Thatcher, he's a two speed, two armour supporting operator hailing from the British Special Forces, the SAS. Thatcher is one of the most useful attacking operators in the game because of his EMP grenade allowing him to destroy mute jammers and bandits car batteries on steroids with ease. Because of Thatcher's ability to remove these gadgets, it allows your demolition crew Morpheus and Habana to breach through almost any wall. I know some other operators like Twitch and IQ can destroy gadgets but no one does it as good and with the least risk to human life as Thatcher. Thatcher can destroy gadgets quicker and easier than any other operator on the game. That's why it means he's picked so often. Because of this, Thatcher should find himself picked on almost every single attacking team, and rightly so. Thatcher's packing some serious heat and comes well equipped in the weapons department. He has three primary weapons to choose from, the AR-33, the LA-5A2 and the M590A1 shotgun. The AR-33 has 42 damage, 745 fire rate and a capacity of 25 with a moderate recoil, but if you put on an ACOG, the AR-33 recoil gets a little bit harder to manage, I find. The L85A2 has a damage of 45, a fire rate of 670, and a capacity of 30, with a similar recoil style to that of the AR-33, but I find that it's much easier to handle when you're using an ACOG compared to the AR-33 with an ACOG. Both of these weapons are very competitive, but I think the L85 just edges it, as it has slightly higher damage and is a bit more consistent at downing enemies when you are hitting the body shot. One area where the AR-33 lets itself down is the fact that its capacity is only 25 and considering that its fire rate is very high you tend to burn through the magazine really quick leaving yourself exposed reloading quite a lot of the time which is not a position you really like to find yourself in and finally another reason for me picking the L85 over the AR-33 is just because I find the recoil is a little bit easier to manage and to control on the L85 because I do like to commonly run with an ACOG sight when I can um, and I find the recoil just a little bit easier to handle when using the L85 with an ACOG. Despite the drawbacks of the AR-33, I think both these weapons are very competitive and I'd feel confident using them both in a competitive environment. So don't be put off using the AR-33 if you do like it because I still do think it's a very good gun. In terms of the best loadout for these weapons, I run very similar attachments on both of them. I recommend going for the vertical grip on both the guns and also I recommend using a holographic sight on the AR-33 because the recoil is a little bit easier to handle than when using the ACOG and then for the L85 I prefer to use an ACOG sight rather than a holographic but you can get away with both it's completely up to you they're just the things that I prefer. I know I haven't touched upon the shotgun here that's just because I don't really play with shotguns generally I just think that these two assault rifles are better to take into the game than the shotgun but if you're a really competent shotgun player feel free to use the shotgun this is just my opinion. When playing a statue you have the choice between the breach charge and the claymore. Now this is up to you which one you want to take in with you. It commonly depends on how many people on your team are taking in breach charges. That might give you the option to take in a claymore with you. Overall though I'd recommend taking in a claymore with you because most of the time when you're playing a statue you are playing as a support. That means that you're going to be commonly sticking with your team and you should usually always be around your breaches like Thermite and Habana. So you're going to basically be relying on them to get you into the objective area if you are playing Thatcher correctly. So having that claymore just gives you that little bit of confidence of covering your flanks, making sure that no one's going to be coming up from behind you. If you haven't used Thatcher's gadget before, don't panic as it's probably one of the easiest gadgets in the game to use. It responds very similarly to a frag grenade, and I'm all sure you've thrown one of those before. If you throw your EMP grenade at a wall with enemy gadgets on the other side of it, it will destroy them. If they are directly attached to the wall, or if they are close by, 
because Thatcher's EMP grenade has a radius on it, so they don't have to be quite touching the wall and it'll still be able to destroy them. You can also throw his EMP grenade directly into the room if you like, but you can commonly find that it will get destroyed if there's a Jaeger's ADS in there, but you can still throw them in there and hope that they will destroy some of the opponent's shit. Here's a list of the things that the EMP grenade can destroy. It can destroy bandits charges, the enemy's cameras, the mute's jammers, the Valkyrie's cameras, the Capcan traps, the Jaeger's ADSs and the smoke's smokes. It will not hurt your team's gadgets however. For example, if your thermite is placed his charge on a wall and he is detonating it, you can throw your EMP grenade mid detonation and hopefully destroy anyone trying to place a bandit on the opposite side. Your thermite will be fine, but it will destroy the bandit on the other side who's trying to do the bandit trick. For those of you that aren't aware what the bandit trick is, you'll commonly find that thermites and bandits have a little bit of a standoff in where a thermite will put a charge on a wall as he starts to detonate it, a bandit will be able to place his car battery down before the thermite is able to go off, therefore destroying the thermite. So if you preemptively throw a thatcher grenade as the thermite is mid blast, you'll still be able to penetrate the objective. A. As I stated earlier, Thatcher is one of the best supporting operators on the game. That therefore means you need to play him as a supporting operator. So a typical day at the office for Thatcher will look like, if you see that there is a thermite or a banner on your team, you firstly want to make sure that you try and spawn next to them. And then when the round starts, you want to try and follow thermite as if he's just offered you the inside of his pocket, similar to teabag in prison break. All you gotta do is Take this pocket right here. Your job at this point is to stay with your breachers until they reach a wall that they cannot get past. Then it's your job to throw your grenade at the wall and hopefully destroy anything behind it, allowing Thermite or Habana to breach that wall. You'll see Thatcher is a real game changer on most of the maps that involve a garage. For example, Chalet, House and Consulate. These are good examples because you'll always find that these garage doors are often bandited Therefore, you need a Thatcher to get through, and if you, if you don't have a Thatcher to get through those doors, the chances of you winning them rounds drops dramatically, because blowing them doors is a key part to winning that round, as it's a fundamental part of breaking into the room. You want to be able to break in from multiple angles. So as Thatcher, if you're able to detonate and destroy what was on the opposite side of those walls, therefore you're going to allow your Thermite to breach in, and therefore give your team a better chance at winning the round. But your job's not over after that. Once you say a breach into the objective room, you still may have two EMP grenades left. Now you want to try and make sure you use all of your gadgets in a round because there's no point hanging on to them for no reason. You may as well try and throw them into the objective room and just see if there's any other gadgets that you can take out that might be able to help your team. After that, Thatcher just becomes a regular run and gun type of operator. You just want to basically do your thing and try and kill as many enemies as possible. So I think that's about it for Thatcher. He's an incredibly useful attacking operator that should be picked on basically every single attacking team. Because if there is a bandit or a mute on them garages, you're basically going to need a Thatcher to get through him. Therefore, it means he's incredibly important. I've talked about his weapons, I've talked about how to use his gadget, and I've talked about what a typical round looks like with him. So hopefully this has gave you a brief overview on how to play the character. And if you haven't played him before, I hope you look forward to playing with him. He's an incredible character. But that's it from me, guys. That's the end of the guide. Hope you enjoyed the video. And without further ado, have a great day.